Okay. Now, as I showed you in a prior video, using the ferro cell, technically the supercell, the much more powerful uh, formulation that lends itself towards a more sensitive magnetic viewing, I showed you what we conventionally call magnetic attraction. However, it's not magnetic attraction. We conventionally think that bodies accelerate towards one another. They never do. Um, I also pointed you to, and I'll post the link again below, the NASA video generated by a supercomputer. And, you know, I don't trust NASA. That, that's fine. It has nothing to do with anything, so don't bring up NASA. Uh, those observations have been made time and time again, existentially so in nature. The NASA video actually shows you two large suns, or two large stars, accelerating towards each other. But they don't accelerate towards each other, specifically. They don't actually come in headlong and collide. People think that's what actually large bodies or magnets do. They don't. I showed that to you in the prior video that you could actually see underneath the ferro cell is that both of them, as they get moderately close, there is a null pressure gradient, gradient created in counter space where there's a little black spot on the ferro cell and all the force vectors are dumping into that. And it's the same thing you can see in the supercomputer uh, generated video of the two large solar masses accelerating towards one another, they don't actually come in and collide. They're actually accelerating towards a null point in counter space, which is why they come in like this, they spin around each other, and eventually they do meet up. Gravity as an autonomous field modality does not exist. There is no difference between what you call, or the conventional human being calls, magnetic attraction and gravity. The only difference is field coherency. And when you have field coherency, what you have is not an additive. Here we have, we don't have 3 plus 3 equal, equaling 6. We don't even have the actual multiplicative. Well, we have 3 times 3, which equals 9. Now, it's even greater than that. This is also the reason why math fails at the fundamental level, because it can never define what a field is, because a field has no existential or empirical constituents. All four Maxwellian field equations never define a field. They only define a field over a given period of time at x vector with a y effect. Math is neither science nor is it nature. Math is a convention created by humanity. Mother Nature and the cosmos, by and large, from macroscopic to microscopic, from macro to micro, does not do math. It only does pressure mediation. Capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity. Acceleration, inertia, force and in motion, inertia and acceleration. Mother Nature doesn't do math. She, she's, you know, we talk about a she doesn't exist as a person. I mean, I'm being extrapolative here. I mean, she's a hairy armpit chick uh, with uh, Birkenstock. No, she's actually barefooted. And she definitely doesn't have a goddamn calculator. Math is a human convention. All we've done is we've reified things that we can actually measure and quantify and then calculated them out and measured them again and again and then added them together. Mother Nature doesn't work that way. Now, everybody's seen these little suckers. I thought a child's toy. I got like a hundred of these. I never mess with them anymore. You hear that noise? They call them singing magnets. They're actually just simple little ferrite magnets. You're supposed to actually take them slightly apart and throw them up in the air and listen to the sound. Like that. You heard that, obviously, right? Okay, so what's going on? Are they accelerating towards each other? No, they're not. You're thinking, well, they're bumping up as they're accelerating. They're smacking headlong in again. And then the force is transferred from one another to the other and then they're rebounding and coming back together. No. There's no difference between these and what's occurring underneath the ferro cell, what's occurring in the, uh, in the supercomputer generated video showing the two solar masses accelerating towards one another. The reason that it makes that sound is of course they're actually coming so close they're actually hitting against each other. What they're doing is they're rebounding against a null point. And of course they're hitting along the entire way. It's kind of hard to, so the things that are actually so clear in my head that are so hard to define, which is, you know, why I'm writing the fourth edition of my book, is that magnet, magnetic acceleration, it's not, and it's not based upon magnetism, because magnetism is force in motion. We're talking about dielectric voidance. Magnetic acceleration is towards counter space, never towards each other. 
just as the solar masses show in the super uh, computer generated video do not accelerate towards each other they do not come headlong into one another they accelerate towards a null point pressure gradient in counter space and circle each other and get tighter and tighter and tighter just like water going you ever stuck a little boat it's an old experiment. You stuck make a little paper boat that which doesn't last very long in the water. Then you pull the drain, pull the plug on the bathtub. The boat doesn't go down. It goes around and around and around and around and around. So you have the whole thing circling the drain. Magnets are circling a drain in counter space. Large stellar bodies, as the accurate supercomputer generated videos show, are circling the goddamn drain, which is counter space. Bodies do not accelerate toward. I showed you that in the freaking uh, supercell video just prior to this video. You can actually see it between those two magnets where nothing is, nothing meaning nothing manifest. All of a sudden, a drain like. Someone pulled it because everything is pressure mediation. A drain in counter space has been temporarily yanked due to pressure mediation, and those magnets are trying to accelerate towards that null vector. You can see it in the goddamn ferrocell. cell. I showed it to you in the prior video. The notion that magnetic acceleration is one thing and gravity is another is absolute bullshit. The only thing that differentiates the two is field coherency, which is even more so than multiplicative. It's not additive, and it's even greater than multiplicative. Math never defined a field, by the way. You can look in any and every math book ever generated. Math never, ever, ever defined a field. Both circle a counterspatial sink. Two bodies that are unlike polarity-like you know, north and south, or south and north, you know, magnets don't have poles, but that's a matter for the book discussion. Polarity only defines the inverse of counter space, which is force in motion, which is polarity by denotation. As so far as field theory goes, true field theory, true natural philosophy, by the way, they're seeking lower pressure gradients, but they're not accelerating towards one another, nor do these accelerate towards one another. <laughs> nor do the solar masses accelerate towards one another. Magnets don't accelerate towards one another. Yeah, sure you do. You get two magnets close together, and then they slam together. No, what you're doing is you're thinking with your eyeballs. That's actually an old saying, thinking with your eyeballs. I saw it. You know, that's how magicians make a, f a goddamn living, by the way, is relying on stupid people to think with their eyeballs. Well, I saw that chick levitate, and, you know, that's how an illusionist works. I'm not talking about a real magician. I'm talking about an illusionist, all right? David Copperfield, blah, 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 David Blaine. Thinking with your eyeballs. Magnets don't accelerate towards one another. The end result is what you see is, well, they're accelerating towards one another, and then boom, they're stuck together. That's not what happens. They're accelerating towards a no point in counter space. And if you could wrap your brain around that, then you'll have a better grasp on how cosmic mechanics actually work because I've shown it to you in the NASA video I've shown it to you underneath the supercell it is not only logical it is existentially so and is also additional proof as if there wasn't enough already that there's no such goddamn thing as gravity gravity is incoherent dielectric acceleration whereas magnetic attraction a totally meaningless phrase is coherent dielectric acceleration, increasing inertia and acceleration. Which, by the way, cancels out force in motion. Force in motion, by extrapolation, is space and volume, you know? The only thing that gives fucking volume to the entire goddamn universe is magnetism. What happens when two bodies accelerate towards one? I got body one, body body over here. In between them, I have... Space has no properties, by the way. In between them, I have a volume, a magnitude. And as they accelerate, that volume decreases until it reaches its lowest pressure mediation. That's also what I also explained to you on what the hell a black hole is. Black hole is neither black nor is it a hole. It is an entity, but not a phenomenal entity, where dielectric acceleration overthrows 
the magnetic footprint for an object, an entity, I can't say an object since it would be phenomenal and therefore visible, for an entity to exist in the physical universe. X, Y vector, it'd have a Cartesian coordinate, X volume. Isn't that really simple? Isn't that what Mother Nature's black hole really is? Yes, it is. Let's state that again. What is a black hole? It is an object whose mass is so large and once coherency sets up then it vanishes from all reality, our conventional reality. See, people can't even think of something that's super massive and that has no magnitude. It's like, even the scientists, the one thing they've got right, they talk about a super massive black hole. Well, it is super massive, but it has no magnitude. It has no volume. Talk about something whose dielectric acceleration, and once it sets up coherency, then it vanishes quicker, is so great that it has overthrown magnetism. In other words, if you want to think about it really, 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 really simple, a black hole is, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to define this. A black hole is kind of like a magnet. Imagine a magnet where you could actually accelerate its own entropy of acceleration to be so great that it overthrows its magnetic footprint to actually has a, have a phenomenal empirical magnitude existence. In other words, we have something that's super massive yet has absolutely zero magnitude. That is actually insanely logical, but to the common human mind, we don't think of shit like that. It's like, here's something that's super massive, but it has no footprint on the nature of reality. It doesn't have any space, it has no length, width, it has no depth, but it's super massive. See, human brains can't think like that because we don't experience that kind of shit in our everyday lives. Nobody does. But as far as Mother Nature is concerned, when you understand field theory, it is not only incredibly logical, it is insanely logical. It's hyperlogical. I shouldn't have said insanely logical. It is hyperlogical. There's the answer to that one. Objects never accelerate towards each other, neither do magnets. I proved it to you underneath the supercell. NASA's own supercomputer generated video, which the link is below, also proves it. It's not the data, it's what you do with the data. And here enters the word wisdom, which very few people have. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can drop a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Wisdom is its own reward. Lux Iveritas.